Here we go. There it is. Welcome to Out of Home Insider. Today's episode is brought to you by LED Truck Media. LED Truck Media specializes in hyper-local, street-level campaigns to get your message in front of the right people. Whether your campaign is a day or one month, with nationwide coverage, your campaign can be live in any major market within 24 hours. If you want to reach your perfect audience in a truly engaging way, visit ledtruckmedia.com. LED Truck Media, out of home advertising 2.0. Thanks again for making today's show possible. All right, without further ado, let's meet today's guest. Today's guest is Sam K. Wonfar. Sam is the CEO of Milk Money, the marketplace that makes buying out of home like shopping on Amazon for some of the world's biggest brands. An outsider to out of home, Sam and his team represent a who's who of not only top musical talent, but the record labels and personal brands. Bring a unique vibe to the most powerful medium in the world with their award-winning campaigns. From Jay-Z and Rock Nation to Travis Scott and Miley Cyrus, Milk Money is attracting a whole new clientele to Out of Home with a mobile app that offers last-minute deals on premium inventory. Adweek covered the most recent campaign, a campaign for Bumble that involved more than 20 vendors in 15 cities and is being regarded as one of the biggest wins of the year for Out of Home and a story we'll unpack here today for some of the key lessons that we can all learn from. Sam, thanks for being here. Of course, man. That was quite, a, quite an intro. I think that everybody <laughs> deserves a it. great intro. So that's it. That's the episode, folks. Thanks for coming out. I'll be back. <laughs> Let me know when I can come back again. <laughs> well, listen, everyone's a buzz and uh, about the Bumble campaign, and no one comes here for the jokes. So why don't we start there, man? Because th- that, that was a, a pretty amazing campaign, and I'm going to bring some pictures up on the screen here. But talk to me about how that came together. Wow, you're fully prepared. Um, yeah, I mean the Bumble one, it's been, it's been kind of like a work in progress. We've actually been working with Bumble, um, for about four years now. Um, they've had, you know, a a bunch of different agencies over the, over the last few years that they've worked with. Um, but they've always leaned on us for some of their remnant buys. Um, you know, and then this, this time around, they, I believe about a year ago, they, they let all their agencies go and decided to do most of their planning and buying in-house. And they approached us and they said they got a, a, an upcoming campaign and it was gonna be their biggest to date. And they wanted to, to basically work with Milk Money and uh, give us a shot to handle the, the big campaign. So they came through and you know, the rest is history. Yeah, and, and, and talk to, how did it come through? Was it traditional RFP process? How, how'd you guys get a seat at the table? Yeah, no, it's not really, we didn't really have like much of an RFP. I know they were considering a bunch of different traditional agencies for this, but ultimately because of the ease of use of the platform and actually their timing happened to be within two weeks of their start date. So it fit perfectly in our remnant window anyway. So, you know, they had had history of working with us and they were familiar with the, with the platform and they knew that we had comprehensive coverage uh, for that short, short flight that they were looking for. So uh, they came through, they had access to the platform. They went through and put their own settings in and uh, they knew what areas they wanted to be in. Um, the vendors didn't really matter so much. They just knew that they wanted very unique assets and the self-serve platform really does that. It allows them to pick their markets. It allows them to pick the, the, their costs, their, their frequency. It allows them to pick uh, different types of formats that they're interested in. And to be honest, they, they, they kind of put their own plan together utilizing the system. And we definitely loaned our support uh, and our assistance and our strategy team, but they did most of the heavy lifting themselves. And that's pretty amazing. It's, it's not an uncommon conversation. Uh, in fact, I had a conversation with an advertiser earlier in the year who was going through sort of the same thing of, hey, we've had an agency for a long time. We felt like we were missing the market of where we really wanted to be. So we brought it in house and that's what we found is that we were not seeing specific types of inventory or not being shown certain markets. What was the feedback like for Bumble now taking this campaign sure. on internally uh, in terms of just the experience overall? Was it d- most, did buy differently? You know, I think most tech brands, a lot of D2C brands, these guys already know their audience I and mean, they know it better than anyone else. And most brands go to agencies so they can help them figure out who their demo is. But to tech companies, they already got that nailed down. So really for them, it becomes a matter of getting the avails and showing them the inventory 
Um, and then they can do, they can do, you know, they can do the planning themselves, right? They know the zip codes they want to be in. They know their target demo. Uh, as long as there's a system that allows them to filter for that, um, you know, it's a pretty self-serve platform and it's really meant for people that are pretty intuitive um, and have already the, the big data at their fingertips. So maybe let's talk about that for a second, because, yeah. I, you know, even admittedly myself, before we really started to talk, I wasn't sure what Milk Money did or did differently. Yeah. How, how, is, how is Milk Money different than maybe some of the other uh, you know, tech companies that we talk about now at home? You know, I think the biggest thing is that we're not an agency. You know, I think the industry qualifies anybody who's a buyer as an agency, and they kind of mm. like pigeonhole all of us together and anyone who has a technology of sorts to be a platform, we really believe ourselves to be a true marketplace, you know, no different than like an Airbnb, right? The, the, the point for us is that we're giving all vendors, big and small, right? An opportunity to have a seat at the table. Um, you know, they're not going to be limited by their sales force. They're not going to be limited by their inventory um, and, and or agency reach, right? So any advertiser that wants to come to milk money, can search freely. They'll have access to anything that's available. And through pretty easy filters, they'll be able to narrow down the inventory to fit their criteria. Um, we're we're the, the only platform, if you will, right, that's mobile, mobile enabled, right? So that people can actually do their, their entire plan, their entire, uh, their buy uh, end to end from viewing it, planning it, buying it, and then tracking it end to end all the way to POP through their mobile phone. Um, and that makes it really, really easy. And by, by not having to pull RFPs and already having inventory turned on by vendors in the system, very similar to like someone who's got a house and they want to make it available on Airbnb. They just turn right. on the dates that it's available. They make it available to us um, for whatever the length of time uh, that there, those gaps are. And a and an eight, you know a client can go in there at their own discretion, pick their dates, pick their time, uh, and and book the book the unit, right? They put in a shopping cart and they exit. It contracts it, then they upload their creative. The creative gets sent to the vendor automatically. Vendor pro, uh, approves it. It then goes to one of uh, a number of printing printers that we have in our network. Usually it farms it out to the closest printer, closest to the end wow. uh, delivery location. That way we cut down on time, delivery time and cost. Um, and it ultimately gets installed a lot faster because we're working with such short uh, time periods. And the client gets to track the whole thing. No different than like Postmates or Uber Eats where you can track your driver's yeah. journey. So you're like, where's the driver? It's the same thing. We never want them to ask the question of where, where, is the, where am I in the process? You know, when is it going to get installed? You know, has it even gone to the printer yet? Has it, has it been installed? All of that's been alleviated and not just for the, the client, but also for the vendors involved. So the, the printer, the, the media owner, the installer, um, and ultimately a photographer who's going to shoot, shoot the POP um, and make it available for the client. So that's pretty much like what, what Milk Money does. It's an end-to-end -end solution. It's a marketplace um, and the beauty about the marketplace is, you know, and what, what really, you know, is uh, significant for me and from, I would think most of the industry is that it gives the independent guys an opportunity to play in the, in the space uh, equivalent to all the big guys, right? So they don't get lost. They don't get lost in the shuffle. Right. So let's talk about that a second, right? So the Bumble campaign was obviously big. Uh, if you had to give a, a split how much of that ended up going to independence? Oh, I would say like at least 95% of it. That's significant. Yeah. Yeah. At least 95% of it. And again, we didn't choose the inventory. So they, you know, they went through, they picked what they wanted. They were brand agnostic. I mean, it didn't really make a difference. They weren't playing favorites to anyone. Um, and a lot of the little guys got to play, you know, I mean, little guys like ICU art and city outdoor and, um, you know, rolling ads and skyline and scene, you know, all these guys got, got a piece of it. And then you got like the midsize guys like big and new tradition and capital. Um, they got, you know, their fair share of it. And then out front got a little bit, but they didn't pick anything from like JC to co. They didn't pick anything from clear channel. Wow. They didn't pick anything from Lamar. Um, 
you know, which again, not, not surprisingly, right. And it wasn't because they didn't have great inventory in the locations, but they were looking for unique assets. Right. So they didn't really go for the 14 by 48s, right. They went for the wallscapes. They went for the murals. They went for transit. They went for unique uh, faces, things that look different for, and you just pulled it up on your, on your screen, but you know, everything looked completely unique and different. So the whole idea was that, you know, every, every person on the app is different, right? Everyone's got their own vibe. Um, and they wanted to, you know, showcase the uniqueness of, of their campaign with unique assets. Right. It's clever copy. It's, it's a brilliant use of, of each one of those uh, yeah. locations. And to hear uh, like the 95% of it going to independence and, and really understand the significance around that in a time where the industry has been hit so hard. Yeah. And some of these smaller guys don't have a sales team, or maybe they did. They had one or two salespeople and sure. you know, maybe they're down to they're running super down. lean. So lean. And just trying to get through to next month, like, hey, high yeah. five, we made it to the first again. That yeah. really matters. How do you see Milk Money fitting into the ecosystem overall with agencies, with the smaller independents? How, how, does, it all, how does it all work together in, in your mind? Yeah, I mean, look, since day one, we knew that um, we were just going to be a piece of the pie. Yeah. Right? There's no, there's no one person or one, one um one part of the pie that's going to really dominate more than anyone else. There's, there's going to be room for everybody, right? You're going to have your traditional agency buyers, the brands that use, use agencies for planning and strategy and creative and potentially be buying other sorts of media. And they're really reliant on them. And that's great, right? Then you're going to have people that are going to look um, to do things on their own and lean on marketplaces like ours to be able to kind of like have a self-serve, um, system. And then some, you know, of, of that will also be looking for remnant or incremental or short flights. Um, and there's a few different platforms that offer a variation of sorts that they can choose from. And an offshoot of that will also be digital programmatic, um, which a different subset will, will participate in. And, uh, and the reality is we as a whole, as a community have to elevate out of home right? In its entirety. Amen. And before we got in, it was either you went vendor direct or you went through an agency and there really wasn't room for new players, right? And historically, most of the ad buys were happening from like the same typical advertisers that just the money would switch from this agency to another agency over, over time. Like every yeah. few years, they'd fall under another arm. Um, and it was like really the same dollars going back and forth. And the main main thing was that, you know, the barrier of entry was really difficult. People didn't know who the vendors were. They didn't know how to access these people. They, they, they didn't want to wait, you know, weeks on end for an RFP. They, um, you know, they, they, the, the pricing in some cases were really high. They didn't want to buy for weeks on end. They wanted to be able to maybe buy for, for a few days or a week or two. Right. Um, and also it wasn't easy to share the, the opportunities internally, right? You had to have like uh, multiple spreadsheets from multiple vendors with multiple PDFs. Um, and then, you know, you have to compile them together in some form of a proposal and then share it internally and then look, look at a spreadsheet and then look at a PowerPoint and try to like make sense of it. Whereas with ours, it's no different than any other shopping cart experience, right? You, you, you just pick all the units that you like, you can see it on a map you add it into the shopping cart. We've got an impression calculator. Um, thanks to Geopath, uh, you know, we're going to have accurate impression counts. Um, you know, we've got a CPM calculator, although I don't really advocate for CPM for out of home. Some, some clients really like that and that's just what they're used to doing. So they, they like to have the CPM calculator. Um, obviously you have your totals. You can filter by market and see how much of the market you're saturating um, and then we've got, you know, some of the other benefits too, like, you know, being able to look at, um, you know, how much of the market you're saturating with, with the units that you've picked, um, reach and frequency and things like that. And then ultimately they put a great plan together and they, they check out. And the other great thing too, is like, we all know, like out of home was limited to like a nine to five for the most part. Sure. Right? And then sometimes even less than that, because you've got people, you know, playing golf and, and <laughs> you know, yeah. whining and dining and networking and, 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 you know, doing what they do to get the business. Right. So everyone's not available at the time that, that, 
people need them. But with Milk Money's app, you've got 24-7, 365 access. And we're finding, and not surprisingly, a lot of our clients do their planning after hours, right? They do it at night. They do it, um, you know, they do it on their phone. They do it on the weekends. They do it during times where uh, most most out-of-home people may not be available. Right. right. And and they're able to control the experience, right? They don't have to call or send an email, and wait, yeah. and, uh, and then maybe I'll get it later. And sure. right. I could sit down with a glass of wine or a beer and I've got some free totally. time now. Kids are in bed. Let me, let me just play with this and yep. see, what, see what it looks like. Right. And if they can I mean, see it, it's real. Look, look, look at Miley Cyrus. When we did Miley's uh, global campaign for, for, you know, her last campaign that we did, she did the entire by herself on her phone from a tour bus. Wow. So she had never bought out a home before. And she was on her tour bus in between uh, cities. And she sat down and she picked the one she wanted. She put it in her cart. Her team got to, you know, sign off on it. And they, you know, they, they verified what they wanted. And they ultimately just checked out. And that was it. And the campaign went live. And that was a, that was a global campaign. I and mean, we had stuff across the United States. And we had some stuff in Europe. Um, cause she was in, you know, in traveling to Europe and wanted to have her, her creative up there while she was doing some shows. And it was as easy as that, you know, and we, you know, we, we, we won a, we won an award for that campaign, which was pretty cool. Um, and in, in terms of like attribution to that particular campaign had, um, a mobile number that people would, would either text or call. So we were able to, to quantify how effective out of home was. And we had over a million phone calls and text messages wow. in less than a week. Wow. In a week. Wow. In a week. So, you know, I mean, there's a power of celebrity there, obviously. But, sure, uh, sure. But it also just shows that, you know, it you works. have a very clear call to action. You buy you buy at the right places and, yeah. and you, you're going to, you know, at-home works. It's super effective. And, and, and I mean, I, th- I think that's the hot take of, uh, of, the, of the year. Uh, Miley Cyrus can buy out-of-home from her phone sure. on a tour bus. Sure. So how many other Miley Cyruses are out there? How many, like in terms of new business, a lot of the brands that I see associated with milk money were not always traditional out of home players. Sure. Are you seeing a lot of new entry? As of last month, about 84% of milk money's customers had never bought out of home before. Wow. So it's a net so positive. A- so that's a, pretty, that's a pretty staggering number. I mean, we've got some of the usual suspects, you know, we we'll have like a Spotify and a Postmates and Casper. And, you know, we just recently did a campaign for YouTube and Netflix. So we're getting some of, you know, some of the regular, play, you know, usual suspects, but a majority of our, our clients are newcomers to this space and they're super excited. Uh, most of them had expressed that they've been looking and eyeing, eyeing out of home for quite some time, but they either, you know, tried to give it a run before and, and it was just too difficult or too time consuming or uh, they just didn't know how to do it. It wasn't, you know, it was, it was too difficult of a bet, right. To gamble that much money and, uh, and, or they just never had, they never thought they had enough money to try it in the first place. And with yeah, that, money, that's a common theme. That's a, I, I hear that a lot. Oh, I thought it was more, I thought it was more expensive. Yeah. I mean, look, it is pretty expensive. Sure. Relative. But, yeah. Um, it's relative, right? I mean, you've got, the power of out of home extends beyond, uh, you know, you know, a little, uh, you know, a little square, a little box on your phone. I mean, right. it's larger than life. It's, it's always on. I mean, when you, when you, you know, most of our clients happen to be millennials. So the, the IRL experience is like a big turn on for them. They, they, they like to know that they can actually go see the billboard, take a picture in front of it. A majority of our clients use it as content for social. Smart. So we end up seeing a lot of our our creative actually live online, um, and and that's great. Like it's super shareable. So you know people take advantage of that. I mean I don't know if you remember like we did our our buy for Rihanna for Fenty um, earlier in the year. See, I pulled up two here. I pulled up the Kendrick Lamar and uh, and Jay Z. You guys did something big with Jay Z and Beyonce, right? We did we 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 did a we did a pretty uh pretty cool campaign for their uh yeah that one jumped out to me yeah th- th- those are people that everybody knows talk talk to me about 
like this, this is significant for out of home in a lot of ways. Sure. Not only is it a big campaign, right? And that's, that's great. But these are, these are household names. These are people that transcend pop culture. So you know, how important is this to out of home to have names? Like well, I'll this? tell you this, this buy in particular was actually pretty exciting because we, we got the request from Jay on Sunday and we had them live on over 500 digital units on Monday. Wow. Um, and this is before programmatic. So there was no digital programmatic platform used on this. And we literally helped them buy 500 units in 24 hours. And they, I, I mean, this is, this is the shocking part, but their creative team literally turned around all the different creative assets in a day. Um, and, and, and it went live. So yeah, that one's pretty, pretty exciting. And, it, and also from what I'm told, it broke a world's record for largest Times Square takeover. No kidding. In, uh, in, in the history of, of out of home in Times Square. So I don't know if we've been dethroned since last year, but um, we got to start the like Guinness book of out of home records. <laughs> yeah. That would be you heard great. it here. You, you heard it here Guinness. first. If you can get them out there to, to to actually verify that and get us some form of a plaque, would be that would be <laughs> it would be great. First rounds on send me. That, send that over to the Rock Nation office. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So so I mean that you you bought a ton of screens. Programmatic wasn't a thing. Like you're not from out of home. How, but how did Milk Money come to be? Like was it was it out of a need? Did you see an opportunity? Uh, just, what, what's the origin story? Because I think that that's getting, the question the everyone's story. The story has not been told. The story has not been the told. Story. And I think it's on everyone's. But like, I was texting a colleague today, and she's like, "Who is this milk boy?" Like, it's yeah. G- people are genuinely interested. You get it. You're getting this out of me. Let's do it. Um, yeah. No. So uh, it, it was actually birthed out of out of a mistake. To be entirely honest with you. So prior to milk money, I. I ran an entertainment marketing agency uh, for a decade called okay. called House of Hype. And during that time, several of our clients, when we did activations, were, were asking about out of home. And a few times I just remember like trying to figure it out, trying to like Google who has billboards and make some phone calls. And it was like a, a real pain point trying to figure it out. And one of the campaigns that we had was actually we were doing a, a BET party for uh, for Puff Daddy, for Puff. Oh, yep. And he wanted to have a billboard near the event. And we finally ended up getting one on Sunset. It was in Sunset Plaza. So we ended up getting one, but it was like a nightmare to do it. And, you know, I kind of like always in the back of my mind was like, this is like so awesome, right? That seeing the billboard live, but it was just such a pain to get get through it. So tucked away in the back of my mind, I always had like this uh, this desire to crack that nut, right? Like to figure out how do we, how do we do that? Um, and then a few years into, um, into the house of hype history, I, as an agency, I got tired of running an agency and people would come to us. Brands would come to us constantly for our network and they wanted to get, you know, placed in a music video or in a movie or a TV show. We're constantly doing product placement and we had the connections, you know, with the industry insiders to be able to place them. And it just became overwhelming. It was just mm. too, too many opportunities, too many missed opportunities. So Milk Money 1.0 was actually a marketplace for product placement and sponsorship opportunities. Interesting. So really it took what we did at House of Hype and we built a website that allowed people to bid to integrate their brand into these key placements. And we had, you know, all the major movie studios and TV networks and record labels, and they were posting their shows and movies, uh, music videos, and brands were bidding on these placements. Wow. And, and give me an example, like a, a placement for Yeah, I mean, Coke. it could have been like, like Justin Bieber's music video. Okay. Right? And brands would bid to integrate into the video. The problem was um, dates shift, production schedules shift treatments change scenes get cut out um locations change and sometimes uh the product no longer fits in the scene or the talent doesn't want to hold the product any longer it just 
there's a conflict of interest, right? And there was just way too many barriers, right, to get it right. It. And although a lot of people were excited to bid and get integrated, there was a lot of opportunity for these, these campaigns to not see the full potential, right? So we started looking for, now that we had amassed all these customers, we had all these brands on the platform, it was like, okay, what other asset, what else could we put on there? What can we list that people would want to buy, right? But we know it's not going to go away, right? Like what's going to be like a placement without um, there being any compromise? And I thought back to, you know, trying to buy a billboard for, for my other clients and how excited the client was ultimately to be able to get like a great deal and see themselves on, on, on out of home. So I just reached out to, uh, you know, in, in my first call was to my friend Conrad, um, he used to be at Total and, and now he's at Sumas. And, and I was like, Conrad, you're in the billboard space and I've known Conrad for, for a long time. And I said, what do you have? And he's like, I got a couple of boards. I'm like, well, do you have any that could start pretty soon? Because I need something to sell on the platform. And he gave me some assets and we sold it within an hour. Wow. And yeah, I mean, it was that, that quick. And, uh, and then I, I, you know, I'm like, who else has inventory? And then I, I called, uh, you know, Lamar and I spoke to, uh, Mike Casota, who's, you know, the, the, the manager in the LA market. And, and I introduced myself and I was like, Hey man, do you have any inventory that, uh, can go live like now? And he gave us some inventory. We put it on the platform and it sold. And, and, and I was like, wow, I think we hit something. So, you know, it was really birthed out of a mistake, but then eventually we took everything else off the platform. We focused on, on billboards and eventually we, we grew to be more of an out of home uh, marketplace. So it started with bulletins and then we started layering in, uh, you know, everything else that, that it is today. And now it's, it's actually expanded beyond the traditional and we've got non-traditional assets as well. I mean, you could find a blimp on there. You can find sky write, sky typing and sky writing and aerial banners and hand painted murals and experiential things like uh, food trucks and ice cream trucks and all sorts of like, you know, great, great assets. You know, we were working with this other vendor who's got uh, rooftop advertising that, that we've recently listed. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, the they, they, like they've been players. on the show. What? They've, they've been here. Yeah. Yeah. They're great guys, man. And fly and by ads yours in this space. So yeah. shout out, shout out to those guys. Um, and I'll tell you, I think like the exciting thing for me is that, you know, when you first went on Airbnb, it was like renting an air mattress in someone's living room. It really was. It was like couch surfing, couch surfing. And today you can book a castle and an igloo and a boathouse. The Ninja right? Turtles own... layer. Huh? The Ninja Turtles layer. Ninja Turtle. I haven't seen that, but I got to <laughs> check it out. But they recently had the Fresh Prince of Bel Air's house. Oh, come on. That's so cool. Yeah, that was last week. So, look, the idea for me is the same thing. You know, it doesn't have to be the traditional guys. Anybody who's got any form of out of home that qualifies, they can list it on the marketplace. And the more you know, we get postings and listings on there, the more advertisers are going to be attracted to the platform. You know, right now, everything we've done has been uh, word of mouth. So someone got something, they loved it. They told a friend, a friend told a friend, um, they gave it a shot. And it's really been like super organic, which is all you can really ask for at our stage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're so excited about that, man. I mean, when we, when we see the faces of our, our customers, right. When they post something on social or they email us and tell us like, this was a dream come true. Or they, you know, they always wanted to, to make their mom proud or their girlfriend jealous or, you know, whatever it was like the look, look, mom, I made it like, here we all I have am. our motivation. There's nothing, there's nothing better than that, you know? And at the same time, we also help our vendors, um, monetize on loss opportunities. So it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, for sure. And, and in just getting ready for this conversation, you know, talking with some, some of the independents around the industry, the feedback's been nothing but positive. So clearly you guys are doing a good job. If, if it sounds like it's a, a great platform for anyone who's got any sort of out of home advertising Absolutely. idea, right? How many different formats do you have if you had to put a number on it? Right now we're probably about 25, probably 25 to 30 distinguished 
you know, formats, but there's variances on sure. those too. But I would say, you know, about 25, which is pretty, pretty significant um, and growing. So, you know, if you're listening and you've got out of home, hit us up and milk money. We'd love to have you on the platform uh, and, and be part of our marketplace. Definitely. How, how should people get in touch if, if they want to get their assets? Hello at milkmoney.com. That's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. It's yeah. hello at milk money. We'll make sure to put it in the, in the show notes, the description below. Uh, Sam, what are you most excited about right now? Scaling. Scaling. It, it's exciting every day when, you know, I mean, look, COVID was, was rough for everybody. Yeah. Right. Us included. I mean, the first few months was a matter of like, what, you know, survival, right. You know, we had, we had clients who had booked inventory and they were concerned about their impressions. Mm-hmm. They were concerned that people were going to see them. They wanted to get out of contracts. They wanted to extend, uh, you know, their start dates. You know, we had, we had a lot of variables. Fortunately, all of our vendors were super supportive. They, they understand the long-term value of a customer. They understand that, um, you know, everyone's in this, you know, it's not a unique situation. Everybody's in this. And the only way we're going to win is to work together. Um, and we power it through, you know, I think everyone for the most part has survived and, and, and is coming out of this thing and, and hopefully going to continue to grow. Um, you know, I think for us, the nice thing was that smaller advertisers who needed to keep their doors open, needed to find new channels of, lo- you know, buying local ads and milk money was a great resource. So I think, you know, during COVID, we kind of got to shine, you know, our value really um, presented itself to our vendors and proved that uh, there is a need for this. And, and we're all about like the micro transactions, right? Yeah. So a lot of like little buys add up to a big number. Um, and none of our vendors ever complain about a, a deal size, right? Like there's nothing too small for them, right? They're all found money. For, they're, they're grateful for any level buy, right? And I think that's like the most rewarding thing for us yeah. is that no one ever complains about why I didn't get more or, or why someone else got something. Everyone so far has been super supportive. And, and I love that about this community. You know, I've had other vendors hit me up and be like, wow, that was amazing what you did with, with pivot, or that was amazing what you did with big, or that was amazing what you did with new tradition. Um, or that's amazing that you had, you know, that incredible mural that you did with ICU art, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's a really tight, community, you know, and, and I really, really love that. And I think that's been part of like what's allowed the industry to, to thrive. And I think this is a moment for everybody. And I think ultimately people just need to be open to change, you know, cause the change is coming. Right. And they need to be open to the idea that advertisers buy differently. Yeah. Right. And you can't lock them into buying one way. Um, and if they historically bought one way today, they may shift and want to buy a different way. Um, which is the thing about us too, is like, we don't, com- we don't, we don't force our clients to be AOR. Like that was like a big deal for the industry. It was like, are you their AOR? Are you their AOR? And I'm like, no, we don't want to be, I don't force my advertiser to only buy for me. If they want to go buy direct or they want to go buy from an agency or they want to try something and come back, we're a marketplace. You know, Expedia doesn't tell their customers they only have to buy from Expedia and they can't call Delta or Marriott, right? Or if they went there, they can't come back. You give them the ease of use of platform and they, they buy how they want. I mean, look, no one tells Netflix what to do, right? No one tells <laughs> YouTube what to do. And, and if as a vendor, you want to say, you know, they're only limited to buying from an agency or, uh, you know, whoever they traditionally buy from, then you're going to miss out on the dollars that they're going to spend with us. And if you follow us, then you'll see that they're, they, they're spending and we're, 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 you know, we're giving them whatever inventory um, we have. So uh, I encourage people to look away from, from AOR, right. And think, uh, think of it in a grand scale. And if you have inventory, don't let it sit there, give it to us and give us a shot at trying to get somebody to, you know, to, to fill it, yeah, add- fill it quickly and yeah. pay quickly. So that, that last piece, maybe say that, say that twice for the people in the pay back, quickly. pay quickly yeah. and pay quick, 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 quickly, quickly cash flow, cash flow is king. Absolutely. So, hey, speaking of scaling, speaking of community, uh, your team's growing and you just added some out of homies to the team, right? 
We did. We did. We, we really didn't have anyone from out of home on our team um, to date. And uh, interesting enough, I didn't really want to lean on anyone from the industry. I really liked the idea of developing and cultivating our own, uh, our own team, right. With, without any, uh, any bias to the industry and how things have been done because we're doing things differently. Sure. So I wanted open people with open minds and I wanted really, really good people, regardless of their walk of life, like where they came from. Right. It didn't really matter as long as, uh, you know, they, they had the qualifications for what it would take to, to work at milk money. And, you know, during the pandemic, we saw a lot of people that had been furloughed and people that had lost their jobs. Um, and we started getting a lot of inquiries and uh, we had kind of put it out there to the industry, to people that were looking to hire. And we got flooded with resumes. I mean, we got so many uh, talented people that were displaced. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, I was like, you know, what? this is a great opportunity to, to give back um, and to give some people an opportunity to stay in the industry that they love. We were, we were hiring, some others weren't. So we opened it up and we got some great candidates and we hired this week alone, we hired three people um, from OMG alone. Um, and they're great candidates and we're super excited to have them uh, as part of our team. Um, and they're bringing some great value and, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll open our doors to, to some more people as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, if you're, if you're looking for a job, um, you know, reach out to us at work at milkmoney.com. Gosh, and, see and what making it easy uh, does. You know, we're open to, to hearing from everybody. So yeah, we, we, that's kind of like how it happened. Um, and we couldn't be more pleased. Uh, it's exciting. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Sam, if people want to get in touch, follow you, where are you most active? How do people find you? Uh, probably I'd say like our Instagram, you know, uh, which R is just great at, follow. Great at, follow. At, milk, at milk money. Uh, super easy handle. Um, and we post a little bit on, on LinkedIn as well, but you know, most of, most of where we're social is, is, is on Instagram. Uh, and I'm at Sam K one far, and you could put that in your, the spelling of that in, you know, the footer somewhere. Be sure. Well, <laughs> we'll make it easy, one, but that's the theme. Make it easy, make it make easy. easy. People do more of it. Yeah. But yeah, we, we want to hear from everybody. I mean, we, we love, we, we love to hear from people, right? We love to work with everybody. So um, whether you're an independent guy in, 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 in the middle of uh, the country or you're, you know, a big guy, um, you know, with multiple markets or you've got some new, new interesting assets or you're looking to, to build out some assets and you want some help, um, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome. And that's hello yeah. at milkmoney.com. Again, show notes, description below. You'll have everything you need to get in touch. Sam, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Absolutely. As always, make sure to smash that subscribe button, share it, like it, comments, all that stuff. That's the best way to support the show. And we'll see you guys next time.